All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Robert Cologne with Revive Ministries. Robert, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thank you for having me. It's always great to be asked to share a little bit. Yeah, no, of course. Thanks for coming on the show. We're excited to hear about your dreams and goals and how we can help. So we like to jump right in. If you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself, what you'd like to do for fun, that'd be great. <sighs> Well, uh, it's kind of um, maybe anticlimactic for some, but I love video gaming. I do game a bit, and um, I also like karaoke. Those are two major things I like to do. Um, but besides that, just, I don't know, I'm pretty pretty laid back outside of my my podcast. Um, um, Occupation-wise, I work in social services, so I deal with a lot of t- um, people every day. But I feel my motivation is really connecting providing a safe place to be heard. Um, That's basically my, I guess, my drive with the podcast. Like Sometimes, you know, when you're doing the podcast, you're thinking, is anyone hearing? And it's just one person. You know, obviously, I'd like to continue to inspire people to share more. That's basically it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that. So tell us a bit more about the podcast, what it's all about and what exactly, what type of guests you interview, et cetera, et cetera. Well, it started, you know, I used to, before, it was 2017 when Revive Ministry itself started, and I just started doing events around my area. I'm down in Florida. It doesn't look like this <laughs> behind me at all, but uh, um, basically, um, I wanted to reach people and talk about things that most people don't want to talk about. You know, me being in the church um, at times, it usually gets pushed under the rug, but it, it didn't matter for me because it was more purely an outreach. So it didn't matter what faith base or where you came from. I wanted to create a safe place. So I had guests come in my events in person and they would share their stories. But when I started the podcast, I just thought, eh, I don't know how this is going to go. But really for me, it was just, um, first was my story of recovery. So I had people that I knew that, that I knew personally share their recovery journey, but then they kind of blossomed from that. You know, I started being more intentional of the monthly themes. Um, uh, it's okay to fall. It's very punny, but we do that in October because a lot of times we're too scared. Like mistakes become kind of more of an obstacle than the mistake itself. So for me, I kind of get inspiring guests all around the world. Now I kind of get guests, from all walks of life, because I, I, it's not heavy handed when it comes, even though it says revive ministries, it's purely an outreach. It is for me, I think about this inspiring hope at the very least. What, whatever you believe, it doesn't really, it's not its purpose. My purpose is to provide a safe place so we could continue having these conversations that are hard to have. And normally we're getting harder to communicate effectively a lot of times. We're too scared to. So I, I I like having this kind of platform to do that, and podcasting has helped that. So. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of the hardest topics that you guys touch on with the podcast? Uh, you know, obviously, whenever you hear about pain um, or of any kind, um, it's it's hard. A lot, a lot of us want to empathize, but like one of the hardest topics is sexual abuse. You know, that's hard to hear about. You know, when it comes to, or you know, when it comes to people dealing with traumas that they had in their past from sexual abuse. That's always very hard. Drug abuse, suicide, you know, mental health issues. Um, we also touch upon, you know, you know, we think about mental health separate from the physical, but, you know, on February, I try, I've been doing the last year and the year before is, I think uh, February 4th is Cancer World Cancer Day. So I try to get a ca- um, cancer survivor that I know kind of share their inspiring story. When it comes to, the mental side of it, how people treat them and how they go, how the recovery goes. So I, I feel like it's all connected, but we try to separate because it makes it easier. So I think that the hardest topics when it deals with children, when it deals with something that I don't know, I'm not familiar with. For me, it's hard. But at the same time, I I know how it feels to be. Uh, I, I know how it feels to feel like no one's there. I know how it feels when you're. You feel like all the chips are stacked against you. I remember when the one person said, sometimes life is like playing a bad hand well. And that's, I understand that. So I don't go ahead and say, oh, I know what you're feeling. I don't, but I know what sadness feels like. I know when I feel like no one's hearing me. So I, 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 prov- I try to provide the best I can to provide that space. And 
people keep coming back, like guest wise. So I feel that's a good indication that they do feel it's safe and it's a good platform for them to share. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love that. Do you mind telling us a little bit more about your story and that? Yeah. Um, um, basically, um, when I was in high school, late in high school, um, one of my friends um, got in a car accident. That, that kind of shift because he was in kind of a, a coma state. But more so, it was when I was in the military, I started getting onset of some symptoms that I didn't know what was happening at the time. Um, I left and I, I finally got the treatment I needed. But, you know, I had a few su suicide attempts. I had some people in my life that were close to me who have completed suicide. So later on through my recovery, you know, first you're like, what's wrong with me? So you forget who you are. You're just like, I am this or that, whatever they tell you. But I began to reclaim who I was. And, you know, for me, I remember the biggest, you know, going to support groups, the biggest issue was, not being hurt. I used to hate going to support groups. I hated it because I felt like, you know, you have this bitterness. Now I look at like, you know, we just had Thanksgiving and, you know, families can be the, your best you know, supporters or the, your, your arch enemies. They're, they're so close to you. So if they hit you, they hit you deep. So for me, you know, with my ones who I'm close to, I always say, I'd rather be uncomfortable than bitter. So especially the people closest to me. So there's a lot of miscommunication. So for me, my journey was learning, you know, I wanted to give back. You know, I, I was doing well. I was working with people in my occupation. I'm like, what can I do in a platform that, yeah, I, I do I do have my faith, but I don't like, I want to, I always ask a question. Could you go on a mission trip without a camera? To those people who go on mission trips, for me, it's not about what I did or pat myself on the back. It's about providing a safe place for people to talk. Because I've seen wonderful things happen when people, even nothing changes tangibly in their life, but they, they do better because they're able to express it. You know, you, some people do athletics. They go maybe run or they box or something. Some people use artistic platforms. And I think podcasting is my way of journaling and allow other people to journal in a safe m mode for me. It wasn't always good. And some of my episodes if, on my podcast shares some of the hard moments of my life of contemplating, feeling like I, my life was over. Like, what was, what was the point? And I feel like it's sometimes the people around my life, it's not what they say. I don't even know what they said, tell you the truth. But it's how they made me feel. It's like Mar uh, Maya Agalu says something very similar to that. It's, and, and I feel... That is what, um, along that line, and then as I got better, I wanted to give back. I wanted to, I wanted to share what I've experienced by sharing. So, like people uh, around me, people I know, I always ask. I don't have any criteria. You could be from any walk of life. I remember this one interview I had with a person from Japan. <laughs> they didn't know English, but she had this app on her phone so she can answer the questions he had it like free so for me communications you know with all the technology we have the means you know obviously I, I wish i was more linguistic i wish i knew other languages well but you know I, I do have that desire to connect to where people are at and for me it stems from my understanding and my empathy of feeling not hurt feeling like everyone talks about my life besides myself everyone's worried about my life and I'm not included in the conversation. And, I'm, and with the podcast, I try to provide the avenue where you are included with everyone else who comes on the, on the podcast. I love that. I love that. And so let's jump into your dreams and goals. Would you say that's like, that's the main one provide it, connect I, with people where they're yeah, at. I, I think, you know, obviously right now, um, there's always a learning curve. So for me, I love to travel right now. It's ridiculous. So I wish I could travel more with, with all the restrictions, but more so I would like to reach people where they're at, you know, that'd be awesome. Like just to go right now, like, you know, places where the on beat, the off beaten track, you know, somewhere to go there and just meet people and ask them, why do they do what they do? And like, why, like, and just have a conversation with them. And that, that that's on my bucket list. But I always like to come home. So I would like to do it like 
my dream is to go like for like a three months thing and then come back kind of thing and then to do all the editing and then and obviously that would be wonderful to do moving forward but for me right now it's just building like the returning guests and everything like that has been really a motivation to keep going i told my wife <laughs> before we got married i'm like I'm going to do this on 85, just so you know. And she's fine with it. So, 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 so I just like talking to people. So it, whether this becomes a means that allows me, it would be wonderful if it could be a means for me to continue doing without having such a full-time job. But at the same time, I love what I'm doing right now, my job right now, because it's all kind of bleeding into each other. So I'm in a good spot right now. But my bucket list, if you're going to ask me, I like to travel the world, but I always come home, <laughs> you know, Travel the world, always come home, but also meet people where people won't normally meet. Like, wouldn't go straight to the more popular areas, maybe the most unpopular areas, and just talk to them, see how they're doing, why they do what they do. And this, it's interesting to hear per, their perspective because I learn more than they learn from me, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, 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 absolutely. What's the number that you would need it to bring in to help you, like, replace your job and be able to do it full time, traveling and everything? Uh, I would say, um, I just, for me, um, I guess honing my craft on retaining guests to come back was my goal right now. Um, to get to that level, I would say I need a few more years experience with the people. Well, this topic and to tell you the truth, it's, it's continuing changing, but number wise, I need more exposure. You know, for me, I have real loyal um, podcast listeners, but um, I know sometimes it's a niche thing depending on, but I haven't really pushed hard on my marketing at all. I know for me, I just really just been doing it to hone in my craft. So when I do want to like really push it, then my quality is there. So it's been a learning curve on both ends. So but at the same time, um, I'm willing to go the long route to this because this is very important. It's not just to, to make be successful. For me, Revive Ministry is not about me. So yeah. for me, my dream is that I get someone who's inspired that he takes over the, later on. So I just takes over it. So that's my whole thing because I want to provide that kind of, I don't know, space that, you know, continues the dialogue, not attached to any restrictions, just attached to kind of listening and, allowing people to share some of the most difficult topics that people usually don't have the opportunity to. So that's it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I get that. But if there was a financial number, like, if there's financial, would it need to be like your podcast is bringing in a hundred thousand a year, 200,000 a year, and then you're out or would it be like 40,000 a year, 50,000? Well, like, I would say something that will cover operations costs. And for me to travel, but also that I can live on that's, that's, I would say, doesn't make me lose sight of what I'm doing. Something that's reasonable that I could live comfortably. And, you know, everyone has a skewed view of what that means. But for me, it's just somewhere I could live and focus on my craft and not have to worry about finances. And then at the same time, on top of that, be able to go effectively on three months, like, um, three months, you know, let's say South Africa. I know what South Africa is hit right now, but like if I went to South Africa, I could go three months and I could see some context, make connections so I could meet people effectively, come back, do a little video editing and post it and stuff like that and be, be guests on other people's shows and stuff like that, whatever needs to happen. So uh, that is, I guess that is how I would see. So number wise, I would say, I would I would I would want something that I'm not worried about things at home. So it has to be a modest, moderate, middle middle class salary for myself. I don't need anything crazy. But on the upper end, on the overhead cost, that's where it's a little unclear because I need to get flights. I need I know like you know I need someone there to help me. I can't just be there um, answering all the emails. I need to focus on certain things. So I need a small team. So that all provides cost but i don't want a big team i will be like uh two or three of us that will help me 
um, to get everything more effective. Because if I go to another country and I'm just sitting there um, trying to, I don't want to be, I want someone, all, everyone has their own set skills and they do that. And I just focus on interviewing and stuff like that. So with all that, yeah, it's got to be something that producing, that's reoccurring, producing some enough money that I feel confident that the people are with me feel confident and I feel confident that nothing at home is messed up. That kind of thing. That's I feel that. I feel that. Awesome. Well, any other dreams or goals that you want to chat about? Um, really, I feel I, I remember um, one of the questions I was looking at was, um, who would you want to meet mm. like now? Um, and for me, it's kind of, um, I just want to meet some, uh, either a person or someone that I could, that, ha that has access that I don't have access to. Because right now it's just exposure. Really, for me, I know I'm going to do this whether or not it blows up or not. I'll tell you that right now. It might blow up for the next person continuing Revive Ministries. But for me, I just want to con make connection with the right people so I could have more access to more people. Because believe it or not, a lot of people don't like, that's the name of the game, especially for me, is getting more people to know who I am and what I'm doing. So for me, whether it blows up and I don't have to have a nine to five job, that would be awesome. But at the same time, it may be something that's a more reality for, because Revive Ministries is not about me. It's about producing so it becomes bigger and be becomes more widespread. And that's my desire of Revive Ministries. So it reaches hard because I'm only one person. It will be wonderful if someone's this excited to do this. And they're all around the world, but like in different sections. So I would like that to see that happen. So that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you need somebody with access. And would that be like an influencer or a celebrity or access to something else? Or I was more like, um, I wouldn't say um, per se celebrity. I'm not saying not celebrity, but someone who has access to people who are heavily involved in what I'm talking about, the topics I'm talking about. And they have people that I could pull in to come to my podcast that I could also go on their podcast, that kind of thing. So to build that community even larger when it comes to the section, the, 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 I would say the, the, the areas that the area that I'm really focusing on. So really like the, someone maybe who done a Ted talk, let's say who's done a wonderful dog one job re regarding mental health or, and having access to them or something like that, that that would be tremendous, especially if they return. My whole thing is building relationships in this kind of, I mean, because resources in the United States are scarce for people who actually need the help. You know, when it comes to mental health, suicide. So for me, it's about building those connections so we can address this stuff effectively together. So that, that, that for me is the people I want to see when it comes to building my dream along with Revive Ministries. I love it. I love it. Well, awesome. What's the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to help you accomplish your highest priority dream? Well, I think one of the things, um, one thing I would say, at least for me internally, that has helped me tremendously, if you don't respect your time, no one else will. <laughs> so I learned that real quick. And also, allow yourself to make mistakes. If I gave up when I started this podcast, if, if my first podcast was something that um, was something that I, oh, it had to be or else. No, for me, I'm, I rolled in with a lot of mistakes. So in regards, um, I know to answer your question, name the most important two things that everyday people can do to help you accomplish. I would say spread the word. If you don't like it, someone else might. Because I have a variety of guests, so it taps in a lot of different avenues. You know, some some people all oh, revive ministry they automatically think it's faith based, and I understand. But really, we don't talk about anything that's faith based unless the person's story involves faith based, which is understandable because that's a recovery story. So, like for me, it's whether you are from you know, I it doesn't whatever walk of life. This is purely an outreach, just like you would do not attached to faith-based organization. For me, I'm just I'm just familiar with faith-based because I'm a leader in my faith-based community. But with, besides that, it's just like me going to Africa and building a well. Does that mean, uh, does a well just 
just have to be faith based to, for it to be effective, or is it just me just helping people down there? So that is my my idea. So yeah, I, I'm not shamed about my faith, but I don't think it's effective. I know what lane I'm in. If I was doing if I was doing something to pro, uh, proselytize, that'd be a whole different conversation. But I'm not. This is for outreach into community to build that hope that a lot of times we don't talk about. So I feel. With so much uncertainty with what happened the last two years, um, that also the only th the other thing I think about is that without all this uncertainty, hope would not be needed. You know, if there was certainty with everything, we wouldn't need hope. So for me, that kind of where uh, Revive Ministry kind of stays in its lane in that regard. So if people could want to help me, just share with someone. Share with people you know. They may not like a few episodes. They may like a few. But know that I do an episode every Thursday. I have um, I already did 100 episodes last March, and I'm pushing through the 170. So, like, there'll be something there. I promise you, I believe, I hope, that may be something that may help you or may inspire you. So, for me, I'm annoyingly intentional. So, if you know someone who you say, hey, check it out. What's the worst thing they're going to say? Oh, I don't like it. Move on. Because there's a lot of other things out there. But... If it is something you like, I, I, if someone wants to help me today, just share them the podcast. Share, share them the link. See if they like it. There we go. I love, I love it. Well, awesome. Let's jump into your uh, our thriving three now. What's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Um, I, I'm going to pick a book because um, it's it's the one I usually note a lot in my in my uh, in my podcast. Man Searches for Meaning from Viktor Franco. I read that book years ago and it kind of inspired me, especially, you know, this one portion where, paraphrasing, he's like, people were giving out half their bread in the concentration camp and people were like, well, they're giving, like, how, you know, it didn't seem wise, but, but those are the people who usually lasted or made it because they saw another day coming. They had hope. There's sus there's with the idea of hope, there's there's something about sustenance when you feel that there's another day coming. And for me, that's at the heart of what Revive Ministry is all about. Because like a lot of times we worry about the tangible things to obtain, but Revive Ministry talks about that thing that we don't really see as sustenance and that it's just purely hope. If you don't feel like the next day there's anything or there's nothing in the future, or your best Thanksgiving, we just had one. Is 20 years ago. Something's wrong. And like Revive Ministry tries to, at least for me, it, it kind of touches on that and reflects on that idea. So Man Searches for Meaning from Victor Franco was arguably one of my favorite books. I love it. There we go. What's one way you like to take care of yourself? Boundaries. You know, it sounds rude. Like one thing is like I work in a field that, you know, sometimes it, people are their, at their lowest point. But setting boundaries has tremendously helped me help people. If I don't say, um, I cannot do this, no is a complete sentence. <laughs> you know, saying no sometimes is okay. But at the same time, um, I remember um, um, when it comes to, I don't know, boundaries, that has tremendously, for me, I was always like, trying to please people. Not really, you know, everyone has that degree, but for me, it was like, I want to do well. And you're worried, you're constantly worried of reaching. And it's not that I don't want to be, I'm striving for excellent. But when I, when I have a perfectionist mindset, there's no room for mistakes. There's no room for mistakes. And then I can't learn anything. So for me, it's like George Bernard, George Bernard Shaw said it this way. Um, I think I wrote it. It says, um, a life spent making mistakes is not only more honorable, but more useful than a life doing nothing, spent doing nothing. So for me, the mistakes are just learning tools. So for me, when it comes to boundaries, I've had to learn that late because a lot of us are way too accommodating. You know, I wish, yeah, I wish things could go a little bit faster in certain aspects, but at the same time, allowing myself boundaries that has helped me be more insightful and reflective and more present with people I'm with. Present with you, being direct, say, no, I cannot do this time. 
It's not that I'm, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, for me, it helps me help other people because I'm helping myself. So that is one of the major things that helped me as I go forward with Revive Ministries and everything else that I dream to happen with Revive Ministries. Whether, it's, it, whether it completes in my lifetime or it's someone else who picks it up, that, that, that for me is good enough. So. Gotcha. There we go. I love it. For those out there who are really struggling with boundaries, how do you suggest people get started with laying them down and standing firm in them? Well, um, I think defining things is important. You know, you define things like, well, this is a job. This is where I work. This is my family. Defining the relationship and the expectations. You know, I hate sometimes how sometimes we can be idealistic about certain things that are unrealistic. So saying, okay, if I'm going to strive for excellence, that means I'm going to be better, a better version of myself each day. I'm going to be becoming something. But at the same time, I allow myself the, the room to make mistakes and also understanding that I need that room. But so I think for those who are out there struggling with boundaries, I would say, Pause. Slow down. This world is way too urgent sometimes. We're hustling a lot, and I understand it. You're trying, but I would say if you're not giving yourself time to reflect, if every day is just, it, it, will, it will eat you up, and like we started in the beginning, I would rather be a little bit uncomfortable saying those no's to people than be bitter because I know if I don't take care of myself, I'll start being like, you know, why didn't that person understand that I need time? But I never told them I needed time. So we kind of create these scenarios. So I think boundaries also help our relationships. We really do matter. We could lie to ourselves all we want, but our, the ones closest to us, the ones that hurt us sometimes the deepest, are the ones that you have to set those boundaries, that they're really there to support you. I mean, they may not understand at first. I think those, those ways can actually help you solidify those boundaries and also help you reflect and see where you want to go and define what success means to you moving forward. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love that. And what's one action step you can take right now to get the exposure that you want for your podcast or continue to take if you're already doing it? Um, for me, I always, um, I wrap around and with my each guest, I, I never minimize who it is. Okay, everyone for me, them sharing, I do not minimize. So I have a very in, um, intentional and tactful way of always thanking them and, 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 and giving them the information. Always, even if I know they're super busy, I always invite them. So for me, the exposure as I'm starting to grow and kind of see, just be, be annoyingly intentional of building and maintaining the relationships that you relationships you do have in the podcast so for me whoever's been the guest on my podcast already knows and i will invite them again for me it's building and maintaining it's not just like oh this is a wonderful podcast and forget about them a lot of and just because oh you know no i'm not for me there are people too and they're taking the time so when you start respecting your time you start respecting other people's time so well, for me that has helped me prioritize yeah, my guests are the people that are taking their time to share their stories and build this podcast to what it is. So for me, my focus is on how I treat them and how I maintain those relationships as I move forward, and hopefully to, uh, you know, more and more and more. So I'm really, I'm really excited about that. I really appreciate you having me here uh, to share what I can with those. Yeah, awesome, man. We love, <laughs> we love having you on and we love what you're doing. It's uh, fantastic to give people that space to feel heard and just connecting with them and giving them that safe space. I do have one more question for you. Okay. It's gonna require a bit of pretext. So you know how there are people on the planet who have a fixed mindset, aren't willing to accept help and aren't really willing to accept change. Sometimes they live their whole life like that and they die like that. Mm -hmm. Other times they'll make the change to growth mindset, willing to accept help, willing to accept change. In your opinion, what is the catalyst that causes that change? Well, um, I think um, similar to what I was saying before, but a little bit more further along, 
when you do take that time to set boundaries and you reflect on yourself and then you kind of see what success means to you, it's, it's, no, uh, I have, I have seen that it's more, it's more solidified when you're doing it for you and not for someone else, <laughs> not to get something or obtain something, but to become better and you're able to recognize that I feel that those changes can be more solidified because you're not dependent on certain circumstances or certain variables for you to stay on it. So someone wants to lose weight. <laughs> it's not like, okay, I'm going to lose weight and then lose the weight. And then where it's like, for me, it's, it's not just the idea of losing weight. It's the idea of why am I losing weight? I want to lose weight because I want to be healthier. I want to be healthier because I want to be around for so and so and so and so. It's not about just losing weight or, I want to be, uh, I want to be my anger issue. Why do I want to be less angry? Well, because I don't want to be yelling at my, my children or my grandchildren and have, have that affect my relationship. So when you personalize the reason instead of these tangible on the surface things, it does stick more because you're actually giving the real reason. Like when it comes to mental health, a lot of people are like, why should I care about mental? I don't know anyone with mental health problems. Well, in a way, they're kind of right. What I mean by that is that mental health is important because of people that we're connected to. It's because our families and friends are connected and are, who, are, who are affected by mental health. We care about mental health because of the people. Let's make it, let's make it plain. Let's not split hairs. We, we care about these things because of the people involved and people who are struggling. So for me, when you personalize it, you take the time, those changes are more, they, I'm not, there's no guarantees, but they're more stable because if you take the time to look at why you're doing it, why you do what you do, it will help you in the long run. Because those rainy days when you're trying, you're like, oh, I want to lose weight. And you're like, well, it's raining outside. I don't want to go outside. But, you know, when you're able to kind of see the big picture, it'll maybe give you that motivation. I use, you know, the exercise thing, but. It's in anything, in anything. We could we could convince ourselves to do nothing. And nothing is an action in itself. So Yeah. Well, there we go. Awesome. Robert, thanks for coming on the show. No problem. No problem. At all. Awesome. All right. What's the best way for people to contact you? Well, um, I have a website. It's called reviveministriesfl.com. There are links on there, how you can just email me. You can also email me at info at reviveministriesfl.com. Um, we're on Facebook, still working on, you know, there's so many different platforms, but the strongest is the website. We do have an Instagram, which is Revive Ministries FL. And um, we are on YouTube. We do do videos, but I'm trying to make it so more integrated so everyone's kind of understanding where everything is at. So There we go. Awesome. Well, all of that will be in the show notes. If you guys were listening to this and you loved what Robert had to say, make sure to reach out to him, connect with him, and help him achieve his dreams and goals of getting that message out there, getting that podcast out there, helping as many people as possible have a safe place to be heard. As we always ask, send this podcast to one to three people you know need to hear this message. Shoot us a five-star review on iTunes and we're out. Thank you.